Let's talk about what SpaceX is up to with their Starbase rocket manufacturing and testing facility in South Texas. This is a remote section of land along the Gulf Coast in a village called Boca Chica that Elon Musk acquired back in 2014 with the idea of building a commercial launch facility for the Falcon 9 rocket. That idea never really panned out, and the facility sat mostly dormant for the better part of five years. That was until March 2019, when the idyllic stasis of Boca Chica was first interrupted by the test of a Starhopper rocket. The era of Starbase had begun. Development of the Starship rocket took center stage in Boca Chica, with SpaceX rapidly iterating through a series of prototypes that evolved from flying water towers to the Flash Gordon-esque Starship that took off from a launch pad by the beach and often crashed there too. It was a really exciting time to be a fan of space exploration. We were watching the development of a Mars rocket right out in the open for everyone to see. There were engines and fire and explosions, really big explosions. And it seemed like SpaceX was riding a wave of momentum that would take them straight into the stars. Elon Musk was hyping up Starbase as the new center of the aerospace world, inviting everyone to come join him in South Texas and build a spaceport city of the future. At least, that's what we thought was going to happen. But in reality, it's starting to feel like the wave at Starbase might have crested at some point last summer and began to roll back. What seemed like an imminent launch of the first orbital Starship Super Heavy duo just kept getting delayed, and we started learning about approval processes that were setting deadlines but never meeting them, and the main event just kept getting pushed back from summer to winter, from winter to spring, and from spring back to summer again. What exactly happened here, and what does this all mean for SpaceX and their Starship program? We're not trying to say that the sky is falling or anything like that, but it's also safe to say that things aren't going exactly as planned. Was the spaceport city of the future just a beautiful dream? Let's talk about it. This is the Space Race. Okay, let's start off with the most recent development in the Starbase saga because after months and months of having basically no news at all about what was going on behind the scenes, we've suddenly got a massive dump of information courtesy of the Army Corps of Engineers. Wait, who the hell are they? I thought we were waiting for the Federal Aviation Administration to grant their environmental approval for Starbase orbital launches, no? The story that we've been reporting so far has been that Starship can't launch until the FAA delivers their ruling on the environmental impacts of launching the biggest and most powerful rocket ever made. We all know that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, and it should come as no surprise to anyone that the reactive effect of launching, or possibly even exploding, the most powerful rocket in history is going to have a negative impact on the surrounding environment. No one is pretending that this will be good for the environment, but from the way we understand it, the review is about determining whether the risks are worth the rewards, and whether or not the potential for damage is being mitigated to the greatest degree possible. What we didn't really know, or what never really got talked about, was this parallel approval process being overseen by the US Army Corps of Engineers that would decide whether or not SpaceX has the permission to expand their infrastructure at Starbase, particularly around the launch and landing zone, also known as the vertical launch area. In the draft programmatic environmental assessment that SpaceX submitted to the FAA in September 2021, they included an illustration of their proposal for the future vertical launch area layout. This is page 37 of the report. The areas in blue are the expansion zones, which would effectively double the size and capability of the launch area to support an additional Mechazilla tower, an additional tank farm, and additional landing pad, plus a new area for assembling and storing cranes. So when the Army Corps of Engineers talk about the expansion permit, they are talking about these blue shapes. And just in case you didn't know, because I definitely didn't, the US Army Corps of Engineers is a global organization of both civilians and soldiers who deliver engineering services around the world. The Corps write the following in their mission statement, quote, 
Our men and women are protecting and restoring the nation's environment, including critical efforts in the Everglades, the Louisiana coast, and along many of our nation's major waterways. The Corps is also cleaning the sites contaminated with hazardous, toxic, or radioactive waste and material in an effort to sustain the environment, end quote. On April 6th, news came out that the Corps had closed the permit application by SpaceX to build this expansion. They did not do this because the group had outright rejected the plan, but instead the Corps cited a failure by SpaceX to provide requested follow-up information to questions that arose during the process. Among other things, the Corps wanted more details about what mitigation measures the company would take to limit the loss of water and wetlands surrounding the site. Okay, so I think it's become pretty clear here that the real sticking point for development at Starbase is the wetlands. This is the one word that keeps coming up over and over again. And if we look at the vertical launch area on the map, we can see that it is surrounded by water. Boca Chica Bay is right across the street, and Boca Chica Beach is just a couple hundred feet down the road. SpaceX identifies that there are 25.5 acres of wetland present at the vertical launch area alone. On page 91 of the SpaceX environmental assessment, we can see the overlap of the vertical launch area boundary and the wetlands that are contained within. The SpaceX permit application to the Army Corps of Engineers proposed the permanent filling of 17 acres of total wetland. The problem with launching big rockets into space is that this almost always needs to be done from a coastal region, and by association, all lands around the coast are going to be wet. The problem is that not all rocket launches go according to plan and could either lose control or explode on the way up. And we don't want that to happen above anyone's head. We want it to happen over open ocean. The only real exception to this is the Russian Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, where the rockets do travel over land, but it's literally just thousands of miles of uninhabited desert and mountains. You could land the Starship Enterprise in this part of the world, and no one would notice. There is nothing like that, though, in North America. So it's not like Elon Musk hates nature and just wants to destroy wetland. There just really aren't any other options. Of course, that reasoning means nothing in the court of public opinions. So when members of the public are asked to provide comments about the proposed changes, various activist groups, such as the Sierra Club, urged the public to petition the court to deny the permit modification. They did not convince the court to say no, but the consultations did prompt the Army engineers to present SpaceX with some follow-up questions. The Corps sent a letter to SpaceX outlining the comments, which included responses to the EPA, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, the Corps itself, and Texas environmental protection organizations. SpaceX was asked to address the comments as well as submit various documents, such as a mitigation plan for avoiding impact to wetlands and offsetting the loss of aquatic resources a plan for alternative construction that would provide the same purpose but provide lesser impacts to the area, and more. SpaceX did not do this, for whatever reason. No one seems to be really sure why they didn't submit the information. From what I understand, this is not a small task. They can't just whip up a response overnight, and we don't know if the company has even started work on their revised proposal. And there's one more complication that unfortunately we have to pin directly on SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. Part of the case that SpaceX was making for the Starbase expansion was that they had no other option. As part of the permit application, SpaceX has to state what's called a no action alternative, which is an alternate plan that would accomplish the same goals that the company hopes to achieve, but without impacting any wetlands. And as recently as October 2021, SpaceX was sticking to their guns that Starbase was their only choice, having eliminated the possibility of launching Starship out of Cape Canaveral, Florida. However, in February 2022, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk mentioned during a public broadcast of his Starship update that the company would move to Cape Canaveral to launch Starship if SpaceX did not receive certain regulatory approval. The Corps letter to SpaceX, written in March 2022, noted that moving to Cape Canaveral seemingly does work as a no-action alternative, according to Mr. Musk, 
And if SpaceX was serious about that possibility, that would require a much more rigorous analysis according to the core. As a result of this incomplete information and subsequent confusion over Elon's public statements that conflicted with the company's official statements, the core told SpaceX in the new letter that its permit application has been withdrawn. Okay, so that's a lot of information there, but what does it all mean? Well, in short, this is a strong signal that Starship operations will have to be moved over to the SpaceX launch site in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The possibilities of seeing a fully operational ship and booster stack launched from Starbase are not looking great. We've got two factors at play here. One, the company seems to have decided that pursuing the expansion of the launch area at Starbase is no longer worth the hassle. And two, Elon Musk has already started shifting his messaging towards Florida as his Starship Plan B. And in hindsight, this is probably something that we should have seen coming. While Boca Chica is an incredibly remote location, it does not exist in a bubble. There are some very real consequences that can come out of taking Starship testing to the next level. This is an unprecedented rocket. Nothing as powerful and complex as the Super Heavy Booster has ever been tested before. So when it comes to the worst case scenario, we're just left guessing. For example, when the Starship prototype SN11 crash landed in April 2021, it sent chunks of rocket debris flying up to five and a half miles into the Boca Chica mudflats. That was just the test Starship attempting a low altitude suborbital flight. And cleaning up that amount of debris was a major project that had a pretty significant impact on the local environment. According to Fish and Wildlife Services, large pieces of debris were lodged into the soil and required extensive efforts to retrieve, which further contributed to the disruption of the natural habitat. So it's undeniable that Starship testing has had and would continue to have a great impact on the environment of Boca Chica. As to the real degree of that impact and the significance of it in the grand scheme of the world, I mean, it is just a tiny speck on a massive coastline that stretches on for hundreds of thousands of miles. So I, I don't know. But if these regulators can make an argument that SpaceX should just pack it up and move their testing to an already established spaceport in Florida, then that's probably the ruling that they are going to come back with. It would be the path of least resistance. They wouldn't have to sell SpaceX, no, they just have to force them into an alternative plan toward the same goal. So let's talk about Starship Plan B. If this is the only way to get it done, then what does that entail? SpaceX is rapidly developing a second iteration of the Starship launch facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A. This has been on the books since 2019, but little progress was made as SpaceX directed their energy towards Starship prototyping and designing a much different launch pad than ever before. That is, the Mechazilla, a giant robotic tower with arms that can lift and eventually catch the Starship and Super Heavy rocket stages. The tower is already under construction in Florida, and SpaceX have said that this will be an improved version of the one already built at Starbase. On nearby Robertson Road, SpaceX have broken ground on an East Coast Starship factory, a huge building that will start off at 320,000 square feet, with a proposed future expansion of another 192,000 square feet. In recent weeks, SpaceX has made significant progress on the foundation of 39A's Starship launch tower and launch mount system. All told, SpaceX is well on its way to replicating Starbase's orbital Starship launch site on the East Coast, hopefully reaching operation capability for orbital launch tests within the next year. Elon Musk has said it would take about eight months to get the Florida Starbase up to the same capability as the Texas Starbase. So if we factor in Elon time, that's going to be in about 12 to 16 months in real life, hopefully. Does that mean that Starbase Texas is dead? No, I don't think so. It still can be a great location for SpaceX to do product development and continue to do low level testing. Even without an orbital launch, the company has been able to use Starbase to fly Starship and complete a successful landing. They've completed multiple static fires and cryoproof tests of multiple iterations of the ship and booster. 
they've built and tested the Mechazilla Tower, the orbital launch mount, the orbital tank farm. They've stacked and destacked the ship and booster. The sheer amount of science and engineering that was enabled by Starbase has been mind blowing. It's just probably not going to be the right place at the right time to launch the most powerful rocket ship in human history into space. And that is frustrating and it is disappointing, but such is life. Having to wait an extra year to launch your giant spaceship could probably become the literal Webster's definition of first world problems. So we'll just wait and see how this whole thing pans out and go from there. But what do you think? Will Boca Chica ever become Elon Musk's personal cyber utopia spaceport techno paradise? Not likely. Let us know your thoughts on the matter though. I certainly could be missing something or maybe we've got it right for once. Drop your theories in the comments below. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.